Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take apart a Black & Decker hedge trimmer. Uh, this is really old. Uh, the switch is giving out. Uh, on this one you have to pull back this switch and then pull the trigger. This part right here is uh, not making a very good connection. So there's a short. I pull it back. If you twist a little bit it works but that's uh, pretty crappy. So it's just a couple of screws on this thing. Uh, these screws are flathead or Torx, so I don't have a Torx that's going to fit down in there, so we're going to use the flathead. should be fairly straightforward. Uh, I used this today, and it did, it worked, it's been working. Um, not going to try to fix it, this was uh, probably 15 years old, and it was the cheapest one you can get at the time, so I'm sure that it's all worn out. Yeah, the screws are tight. If you've never used one of these, they're very dangerous. Uh, this one especially is an electric powered one. Uh, so you're going to be running a long extension cord from your wall. And it uh, comes in here loops around and plugs in the back. The only problem is your power cord wants to get in here and when it does there's a couple of sparks and you usually trip the breaker and you end up wasting your power cord. So disappointing when that happens and uh, this one is eaten Maybe three three power cords. Um, so, you know, you're thinking a 100-foot power cord is probably $15, $20. Three of them is about $50 to $60. This entire thing, I think, was about $25 brand new. So, it's uh, eaten more cords than it's worth. But if you don't have one of these and you're trying to trim your hedges, uh, you're wasting your time. There's really no other way to do it. If you're in an area where you have shrubs and hedges and stuff around your house, this is the way to take care of them. Let's see, it's kind of hard to see down in there. And you can see this thing is uh, a bright orange. Uh, obviously, it's a black and decker. Uh, that's their their signature colors. Um, or it used to be. I don't know what their colors are now. I think this is. No, I have one more orange tool. When I first started uh, owning a home, you go out and you buy the cheapest stuff to get the job done. And so I have a whole set of the cheapest stuff to get the job done tools. And we're coming up on the end of them. This was uh, one of the last ones. Man, these screws are not wanting to come out. The only other thing I have that is a Black & Decker is the leaf blower. And I use it very infrequently. So much wind around here, you don't really have to do that very often. And I was kind of hoping this would go a little faster. These screws are inch long, inch and a half long, and with a, a flathead screwdriver, it's taking a while. Should have got an extension bit with a power drill. That would have. You know, I guess my power drill is a Black and Decker, but it's it's newer. And it is lithium, so it is not too shabby. Man, I can't really even see in there. Yeah, I may end up just fast forwarding through quite a bit of this. Oh man.
Five minutes in, and still taking screws out. Oh, jeez. It's always the last screws, the worst. Oh, man. Turn up my screwdriver now. I'm gonna put some elbow grease on this one. And you can see there's not much safety equipment on this. It's just a plastic shell with a little blade. And I've been wanting to get a new one of these. We have a lot of shrubs to trim. And every time I have to deal with this one, it's a, so frustrating. I guess when you have young shrubs, they can uh, have little bitty branches. But the older your shrubs get, the bigger the branches get. So at some point, this space right here becomes too big, or the branch becomes too big for that space. And death to the flathead. The only thing good a flathead is is to do prying. It's so hard to use. Okay. Well, that piece, I think this piece is good to come off. Oops. Okay, we have this one screw that's being screwy. Oh, man. done. Oh. Let's see. That should be it. Okay, get ready for the money shot. All right. Well, you can tell it's been used. Yeah, so what happens is, is this motor spins and it drives this little bar right here back and forth. And as you can see up close, these little blades, they slide back and forth and chippity chop everything apart. I huh. wonder if that wire is connected to anything. Whoa, just shot a spring across the room. Okay, so this is the negative on the switch. Let's bring it a little closer here. And this is not connected to anything right now. Um, you can see the power. There's no protection here. It's just a flat up. It's a little popper switch. This is what, what was causing the trouble. There's a little catch mechanism so you don't do it without sliding the slider. But this little guy, it's not connected to the motor anymore. Uh, looks like it broke off. Probably right there. So that's pretty disappointing. Well, that's a pretty beefy looking motor. Um, it's an AC motor. Brushed 
Let's see if I got a tools to fix this. Not fixing. I'm not fixing things anymore. This is the brake. And it is screwed on pretty tight. Yeah, this is pretty beefy for a the lowest end of the lowest end. Yeah, the newer ones of these are battery power and they're either lipo or lithium cell. So you don't have to drag a cable around everywhere and you don't have to worry about cutting through that cable. So this one's probably, I don't know what it will be replaced with. I was looking, they have an attachment from a gas powered weed eater. I think that might be the best path. Okay. And we dropped the brushes. They look pretty uh pretty decent. No scoring, not really destroyed. A little bit of a fan to blow the air around. Heavily geared, directly milled into the center shaft of this motor. That's pretty neat. And it's a little epoxy down there. This is some kind of hard plastic. Huh. They use little bits of glue to uh, balance the motor. That's pretty smart. Okay, and then we have a gearbox. And we can uh, peek in there too. Just to ignore all of the bush trimmings spilled out everywhere. This doesn't really have a date on it that I could find. Uh, there was one on the bottom that said right here that stamped 2004. Yeah, it could have been from 2004. No, it's 2016 now, so that would mean this is 12 years old. Um, that's possible. Um, they probably still have these in the store. Uh, they're pretty easy, cheaply made. Uh, you could probably get these uh, at Walmart now too, just the lowest end store you can get. Not that Walmart's low end, but some of the stuff you get there is a little questionable. Okay. So, that's a big mess. Uh, you can see there's a little bearing right here. It seats in there. Just slides this back and forth as it spins. It's a scary contraption. So inside of here, let's take the gear out. Oh, look at that. It is got full of grease. That's, you know, that's really what you want to see. You want to see all that in there. If you don't have that, then you're just messing up. And this is a very beefy... It's got a bushing in the middle. It's very beefy. It looks kind of like a ball bearing, but it's not. It's just an imprint from the grease of the leftover stuff there. And that's about it. Now this probably weighs a pound. I mean, this is some some pretty sturdy metal. A yeah, pretty good mill too. It looks like it's kind of welded almost, but that's probably just the discoloration. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, that's about all the video. Now I got my hands all dirty.
See you later.